we got a special episode this week. I'm going to turn this and this into this. Cowboy caramel corn with pork rinds. Y'all remember Cracker Jack? Great treat it was. Come in a box back when I was little and we looked so forward to getting it because they sang that song all the time. What was it? Candy coated popcorn, peanuts and a prize. That's what you'll find in Cracker Jack. Candy coated popcorn, peanuts and a prize. That's what you get in Cracker Jack. Caramel corn really dates back to the 1870s long in Merit World's Fair in Chicago. And it was such a big hit that this man that founded the company he decided that, hey, we're gonna make this and sell it. Now, I want you to look, and it's still on there today. See this young fella right here that is on the Cracker Jack? He has always been on there, him and that dog. Now, the man that owned the company, this was actually his grandson. They called him Jack the Sailor. He died of pneumonia when he was about eight years old. And the dog, he is real too. The man that owned the company also had a partner, and that partner had this dog right here, and they called him Bingo. He was a stray. There's a lot of heritage on the package of Cracker Jack. I got in the kitchen yesterday and got to practice in making caramel corn, my version of it anyway. And folks, it's really so easy to do, but I didn't want it to be just regular caramel corn. We're gonna give you three different options on this caramel corn. We are hot and spicy pork rinds, barbecue, and what? Cheesy Cheetos. Now, I have popped a lot of corn in my lifetime, I have. I like to put it in, I guess you'd call this a stew pot, but I like to have a lid on it that I can actually see the popcorn. So a little bit of avocado oil, don't take much, it don't, or you can use vegetable oil, give it a shake all the way around. And look here, Kent might have got too much, so he's gonna pour a little out. You just want you a little coating there in the bottom. We need someone that's gonna be the actual first member of the team to go in the pot. When he pops, we'll know it's time to add the rest of it. So probably a medium heat to start out with, but we will turn that down along as we're going along popping our corn. I will give you a little tip right here, but it's not about popping corn, it's about grease temperature. Now I went to a lot of fish fries when I was little. Them old timers would be fishing and they would always just fill up a big old 35 gallon cast iron wash pot, put a weed burner or a bunch of firewood under it and let her go. But they never had a temperature probe or none of that. They had two methods that they knew that grease was hot enough to fry and whoop, did you see that little fella? Whoa. Just pop right there. I'll finish that story in a minute, Shan, okay? So let's go ahead and put our popcorn in there. Put the lid on it. Give it a little shake here to sort of level things out. I turned it down to about a medium low and things will start happening in a minute. Back to my story that I was rudely interrupted run from one popping kernel of corn. Them old timers when they was frying just had two methods to know that grease was hot enough to fry. One was a match and they'd just hold it down there at that fire and that grease and when it lit it was hot enough. The other one was a piece of popcorn. Throw that seed in there, when it popped it's time to fry fish, and things is happening right in here now. I can see some things happening. We're gonna give it a little shake. There is about eight of them have already popped, Shen. They is getting pretty close to the end of it. I don't hear as much popping as I did before. We're gonna just keep an eye on it and keep a listening and watch for movement. It's sort of like hunting out in the woods. You just wanna keep an eye on things, and if you hear something, you know something's coming. Look here, it is. Popcorn time. Get the movie out, Shan, it's time to go. When you take that off the fire, still a little popping going on. That's what you really need. It'll still pop there a little, there's some trapped in heat. It was a long time in life before I knew how you even made caramel. I thought it was something totally different than what it was. But you start with white sugar. A cup and about a third. We're in medium heat because you don't want to do this too high either. And this is going to take you a little bit. Don't get discouraged. Don't run off and leave it. Now, when you see that jiggle in that skillet, you know that that sugar is melting and we don't want to burn none of that sugar. So it'd be a really good time for us to go start and stir it around here. We're going to turn that down just a tad. 
because we need pretty well a low heat for this as it's going. When you see that all that sugar has turned brown and golden brown to begin to caramelize there, we're gonna take two tablespoons of Kerrygold butter and just keep stirring that around. You can see our caramel sauce is getting pretty smooth. We're gonna add three fourths of a cup of half and half. Now, I will tell you from experience, it's better if it's warmed. This is not warm today, so we're gonna add a little bit at a time. And it's gonna try to see here, crystallize and just all settle on top. That's because that milk was cold and the caramel was hot. Just keep stirring, keep adding you a little milk. This will get back to a smooth consistency, I promise. The longer this cooks, the thicker it will become. And if yours is just thin as water, add you some more sugar to it gradually and slowly, and you can stir it in. It will get thicker in a hurry. But we're gonna have to set this over here to the side while we get all of our spices mixed up, and then we'll rewarm it and we'll make us some caramel corn. Remember, I told you three different kinds. Hot and spicy pork rinds, Cheetos cheese puffs, cause I did me some experimenting and these work really better than, than just regular Cheetos. And barbecue style, I'm gonna use our rib rub. All I'm gonna do is crush some of each one of these, these two, in a, in a sack, just get them mashed up and then I'm gonna run them through the magic bullet to where they're more like a powder. That's what we're gonna season our popcorn with. I split that popcorn up pretty evenly into three batches. I counted every kernel equally, I did. And I'm gonna start with my favorite first, which is the chicharrones. I like to put it all on there right at the first and mix it with that popcorn just a little. There's not gonna do a lot of sticking to it right now, but we're gonna divide that caramel sauce into thirds as well. So let me get it over here. You tell me when you think that's a third, Shan, of what's in there. I would say that was pretty close. Now, when you get it to that point, you gotta go to mixing cause that caramel's gonna set up pretty quick. So just keep mixing around and around and you can see the wind is giving the big some popcorn down here and he's really proud of that, he is. We're just gonna go ahead and dump this on a wire rack and sort of just spread that apart a little to where it can all get some air and begin to dry. Go ahead and taste you a bite of that. Mm. That is on the money today. But if you taste it and you think, I would like a little more spice to it. Grind you up some more of them pork rounds and sprinkle them right there on top. It'll stick to that caramel and you'll have it as spicy or as less spicy as you want. If you was at State Fair and they was making this, this would have all been done in a big old kettle. And then after that caramel, as this was going around, the caramel would get on, it would dry pretty well instantly. They got a little heat to it. I did it yesterday just like this, just let it dry there on the cabinet, took it about I'd say 20 minutes, and then I put it in any Walmart sack, bread sack, plastic bag, and I just go to shaking it really good and rubbing it a little. It'll break apart there to where you've got bite-sized pieces and it is ready to go and you didn't even have to stand in line at the fair. Stick with me, just like this popcorn does, because what? We're gonna do some more with some cheese puffs and a barbecue version. I don't really know where to start. Start so with I, the um, caramel or the pork rind. Pork rind. We're gonna go with the pork rind first. You get the caramel right off the bat and then it goes along, you begin to get that tingle back there in the back sort of, which gives you a really good spicy, but you get that savory flavor of the pork lard that's on there too as well. I'm gonna pick this one right here. This is the cheese puff. Shan said she really liked it today. 
There's some cheesy goodness going on in there today. There really is. And any of them pieces of Cheeto that was too big, didn't grind up well, you just pass them off down here to culinary. And there's culinary one, culinary two, culinary three. Duker, you're just over there and I don't have nothing for you, buddy. Now, I'm gonna move on down here to the, the barbecue end of it, our rib rub, and you could use anything you want for this. I've done it with our skeet, I've done it with our original. You could use chili powder, garlic powder, anything that you want to experiment with. Don't be afraid because the Cracker Jack people will applaud you when it's over. So let me try this. I get that chili powder that's in that rib rub, sort of just jumps out at you, but there's some smokiness that comes out of there too. What's your favorite? Mm. It's a really hard choice today, but I would say if I had to line them up the way that I was going to eat them, it'd be what? Chicharrones first, rib rub second, really? cheese be third. See, and mine is cheese, chicha, uh, pork rind, and then the rib. Mm. I had a good time in this video. Brought back a lot of memories for me with the Cracker Jacks it did. And it's so easy to do. Get the family in there. Experiment with whatever flavors you want to put on it. But hey, I need y'all to check out the events page here coming up pretty quick because we have some events that are going to be listed. First one is coming up March 29th at the Ritz Theater over in Wellington. A private dinner and a show with me and the Cleverleys. And if you've never heard of them boys, look them up. They can play some music. They can and they are funny. Our grand old Opry House standing ovation. <laughs> So reach out there and engage to us on the Instagrams and the Facebooks. and uh, We're even on some of the dating sites, Ancestry.com. We just want to see you shake that. So be sure and check that out. But it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all the servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept that old flag of flying in camp. But also one more thing I'd like to thank y'all for. Thank you for all the prayers that the big has got because the big is so much better, aren't you? You have caramel on your ear. I don't know how that got there, but we thank y'all for your prayers. The rest of you, come on in here quick because we're finna eat this up. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Caramel Corn Trail. Cowboy Caramel Popcorn Pork. No. Cowboy Caramel. Cowboy Caramel Popcorn. Caramel Corn. Cowboy Caramel Corn with pork rind. Pork rind. What a set of thought. Okay. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> Cowboy. For real? Yes, for real. Caramel Popcorn. Cowboy Caramel Corn. Yeah. With pork rind. Yeah. Oh, looky here. Here we go. Prize inside. Oh, it's a sticker. This is Bingo the dog. I'm going to put him right here. And I'm going to taste me some of theirs. Look, I do love me some Cracker Jacks. <laughs>